Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers and Surgery. I'm Elizabeth Carpenter, a General Surgery Resident from San Antonio Military Medical Center, and I'll be briefly reviewing the 20-year long-term outcomes of the Landmark NSABP B06 trial, comparing total mastectomy, lumpectomy, and lumpectomy plus radiation for treating invasive breast cancer. As we're likely all familiar with, Sir William Halstead was the U.S. surgeon who pioneered the Halstead radical mastectomy for breast cancer, the results of which he published in the Annals of Surgery in 1907. The Halstead mastectomy encompassed a mastectomy with removal of most of the skin, resection of the pec major and minor, and complete axillary dissection. He advocated this operation for all breast cancers, regardless of stage or other tumor characteristics, and he published startlingly good outcomes compared to those of his peers. This was, of course, an extremely morbid and cosmetically disfiguring operation, but became the standard of care. Fast forward to the 1970s, when studies began investigating whether or not less extensive surgery would result in oncologically similar outcomes, which was indeed demonstrated in the 1971 NSABP trial comparing the Halstead radical mastectomy versus total mastectomy versus total mastectomy and radiation in both clinically known negative and positive patients. Outcomes at first publication in 1977 and on 25-year follow-up in 2002 demonstrated no difference in survival. The field continued to question if such extensive surgery was truly necessary, so the NSABP group in 1973 began the design of a second RCT, which we'll be discussing today, the NSABP-06 trial, investigating total mastectomy, lumpectomy, and lumpectomy plus radiation, and in 2002, they published the 20-year outcomes of this important work. So the overall clinical question in the NSABP B06 trial was the following. For women with invasive breast tumors less than or equal to four centimeters with or without positive lymph nodes, so stage one or two invasive breast cancer, is there a survival difference between total mastectomy, lumpectomy, or lumpectomy with radiation? The trial was designed to be a prospective, multi-center, 34-site randomized clinical trial. Patients were enrolled if they had tumors less than or equal to four centimeters and any nodal status was included. Patients were randomly assigned to the three treatment arms that we see here. The protocol specified women would be treated with 50 gray of radiation to the breast, but not the axilla if in the radiation arm. Additionally, all women with one or greater positive axillary nodes received adjuvant systemic chemo with milfalin and fluorouracil, the standard adjuvant chemo regimens at the time. Exclusion criteria were numerous, but included greater than stage two disease, inflammatory breast cancer, skin ulceration greater than two centimeters, satellite or parasternal nodes, and some others that we see here on the slide. The primary outcomes were disease-free survival, distant disease-free survival, and overall survival, which were all counted from date of surgery and assessed via the Kaplan-Meier method, and Cox proportional hazard models were used to estimate hazard ratios. The trial was conducted over three years between 1971 and 1974. We're going to specifically look at the 20-year results. Regarding follow-up of that duration, 69% of all women included in the analysis either were followed for at least 20 years or were known to have died during that period. Importantly, the percentage of women who were followed less than 20 years were similar among the treatment groups. The following patients were enrolled in each category here, as we see in the first uh, row. The distribution of patients according to tumor size, age, and nodal status were similar. Approximately 60% of the women were 50 years or older with an average age of 56.4 years. Women with small versus large tumors were evenly distributed between the subgroups with slightly more than 50% of patients having small tumors defined as less than or equal to two centimeters. 62% of women had negative nodes, whereas 12% had at least four or greater nodes. 75% of patients had a known ER status given that hormonal markers were not required for study enrollment, and 64% of these patients were ER positive. Positive tumor margins were found in approximately 10% of both the lumpectomy alone and lumpectomy plus radiation arms. Breast to radiation decreased the likelihood of a recurrence in the ipsilateral breast, with a cumulative incidence of recurrence 20 years after surgery at 14.3% in the lumpectomy and radiation group versus 39.2% in the lumpectomy alone group. The benefit of irradiation was independent of nodal status, which we can see here. Additionally, women treated with lumpectomy recurred earlier with 73.2% of events happening in the first five years after surgery in the lumpectomy alone group 
versus 39.7% in the first five years for the lumpectomy plus irradiation group. However, these results did not translate to differences in disease-free survival, distant disease-free survival, or overall survival. Notably, if you had a local recurrence and underwent resection, you were counted as disease-free survival, and this was because women who underwent total mastectomy in the study weren't at risk for this event. At 20 years, disease-free survival was 36% for women who underwent mastectomy, versus 35% for lumpectomy alone, versus 35% for lumpectomy and irradiation. There was a nearly significant increase in disease-free survival for women undergoing lumpectomy and radiation as compared to lumpectomy alone, with a hazard ratio of 0.87, p is equal to 0.07. There was no significant difference in distant disease-free survival with p equals 0.34, with 20-year distant disease-free survival at 49% for total mastectomy, 45% for lumpectomy alone, and 46% for lumpectomy and irradiation. Finally, there were no differences in overall survival among the treatment groups, with P is equal to 0.57. At 20 years, survival was 47% total mastectomy, 46% lumpectomy alone, and 46% lumpectomy and irradiation. There were also no significant differences in survival between the two groups of lumpectomy-treated women with negative margins on resection. Finally, cumulative incidence curves for all deaths, regardless of cause, are shown here, which did not differ significantly between the two lumpectomy groups. However, an analysis run with log rank subtraction demonstrated a marginally significant decrease in deaths due to cancer for lumpectomy and irradiation versus lumpectomy alone, with a hazard ratio of 0.82, p is equal to 0.04, though this survival advantage was partially offset with an increase in deaths from other causes with a hazard ratio of 1.23, p is equal to 0.21. A noted criticism of this trial was noted in a letter to the editor of the New England Journal on May 19, 1994, in which Fisher and his colleague C.K. Redmond disclosed on behalf of the NSABP a misconduct by one of their investigators contributing data to the trial and several others that were discovered when a protocol statistician reported a discrepancy in the data. That being said, a reanalysis was done which yielded basically equivalent results to the original study. There are some important conclusions to take home from this study. First, breast irradiation with lumpectomy does decrease the likelihood of a recurrence in the ipsilateral breast when compared to lumpectomy alone. However, at 20 year follow up, overall survival is equivalent in patients undergoing mastectomy, first lumpectomy alone, first lumpectomy with radiation. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at ElizaCarpenter16. Don't forget to review this content with the current This Week in SCORE module, Breast Part 3 of 3, and thanks for listening.